Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. We're actually not doing much of anything in the garden today. We're just kind of looking around and enjoying the fruits of our labor. But there are a few key things that I wanted to point out to you guys. Um, number one being the flea beetles that are slowly taking over my potato greens. We'll get a closer look at those guys and we'll go over the top two natural ways to get rid of them. So starting out, we're just gonna kind of take it all in. It is absolutely amazing how fast this all is growing. The only plant that we lost on transplant was actually this guy's twin. So we've only got one beet right now. The other one was planted right here. It just kind of dried up and went away. Um, ever, never actually found any sign of it. So the bush beans that we planted have already got some beans that we can pick. It has been quite difficult to not pick these. Um, kind of wanted to wait to show y'all. They are all over the place. And we've even got one or two little burgundies. Okay, one burgundy. One burgundy per plant. <laughs> and I had said, I think in the last garden video, um, that when I planted these guys and built this trellis, I was not aware at the time that these were a bush bean. Um, so we have restarted some vining green beans so that we can get some really good coverage on this guy. We've got one or two snow peas that are really hanging in there. Our cucumbers starting to take off starting to really utilize that trellis. And as you can see, our tomatoes have gained some incredible growth. Now these peppers here, I did not grow these. These were actually a gift from my old neighbor. Um, we dropped by our old neighborhood the other day to say hi to everybody, look at her garden, show her pictures of mine, and she had these babies waiting for me. So I wasn't expecting these, but it worked out pretty well because the peppers that I started from seed never really did take off, and that's okay. I mean, we. We've got literally everything else, but I've got some cayenne back here, and we got some bell peppers up here, and then there are actually some extra, so those are over here. Now another thing she gave me were more broccoli plants. She said that she was trying broccoli this year as well. Her plants did kind of get torn up a little bit, just like mine did. These are the ones that I planted. Um, you guys watched me plant and they are kind of getting hit with those flea beetles being so close to the potatoes but um we went ahead and started three more we'll see how those go and then there are actually three more over here and i know they look pretty torn up but they've just been planted yesterday well last night rather we planted um, after dark because it was so hot but we'll get those back in shape we just got to get the bugs off of them and speaking of bugs let's take a look at these little assassins You can see what they're doing. They're kind of punching holes all along these leaves. And a really good place to find them is actually on the underside of the leaves. Now I came out, um, have been coming out the last few nights anyway since I've noticed these guys, and dousing the top and bottom side of each plant with my hose because that will help knock them down and they really don't like water so they drown quite easy. And that helps us out because we really don't want to use chemicals. But luckily there are several natural ways to get rid of flea beetles. The method that we're going to be trying is one gallon of distilled alcohol, two tablespoons of organic soap, and one cup of isopropyl alcohol. Why is my phone focusing in and out like that? Mix that whole thing up and put it in a spray bottle. You're going to do the entire top of the plant, and again, like we talked about earlier, you're going to want to flip these over and shoot the underside as well. So flea beetles as a whole are not actually going to damage your potatoes, but they will damage the greens, and that can lead to other diseases. But the flea beetles themselves punching holes in your leaves won't actually damage your crop. But we don't want them around because they're too close to the broccoli, and we want to maintain a perfectly healthy garden bed for next year. These guys will typically do two to three generations in a season, but if you have an especially warm winter and you're in a southern state like we are, the adults can winter over in a nice warm mulchy garden bed. So we're going to do everything we can to get rid of three generations and hopefully next year we won't have this problem at all. So while we're out here we're just going to take a look at everything else. We planted two good rows of carrots and as you can see they're coming up but we're not going to have nearly as many as we actually planted so not really sure what happened there. It's possible that the roots dried up. It has been an incredibly hot summer so far. I think currently it is 91 degrees. And we've been having trouble keeping everything watered just with what's in the rain barrel, so 
One of the things that we're going to do later in this evening when things cool down a bit is take some of this mulch. We've got a fresh pile from where Josh mowed for me today so that I could do this video and not have a shaggy lawn in the background. Thank you, babe. I love you. And uh, down here at the end, we've got some stuff that is more than ready to use. It's nice and dried up. That's what we want to see. So we're basically just going to layer this around the base of all of our plants, and this is going to help retain some moisture. It's also going to help a little bit with those flea beetles. Um, the female flea beetles like to lay their larva down near the soil of a plant, and the more stuff you have kind of mounted up around the base, the more they really can't gain access to the soil, and typically they'll find someplace else. We've seen an incredible explosion of growth in our corn. Growing up as a kid in Michigan, the rule was always knee-high by the 4th of July. So if your corn is knee-high by the 4th of July, you're going to have a good harvest right on time. And of course, our beautiful squash patch. This one is probably my most favorite part of the garden. Um, I have such a thing for squash. Squash and zucchini. You can give it to me grilled, raw, sauteed, fried, on a shish kebab, barbecued, slow cooked. I really don't care. Make me some gumbo with it. As long as I have plenty of it. Now these guys each have a little feeder tube bottle. Kind of show this. These just have a small hole in the end. Um, right there. So you just fill the bottle up with water. Stick this down near the root system. We put these in when the plants were still young so as not to disturb any of the roots and that's going to make sure that the water actually gets down to where it needs to be and doesn't just roll off the top because there is a lot of peat in this bed and peat does not like to take water willingly. We are starting to see some fruits or vegetables rather about the size of my thumb coming on beautifully though and this plant has multiples Got a couple of uh, brand new little cabbages planted over here in the shady end. This is a zucchini plant. And it's got some more blooms coming on here. So this row right here, I've already started more Brussels sprouts. And there's a spot down here where we have some okra planted. The goal of successive planting is just to make sure that all of your crop doesn't come on all at one time and that you can still be picking several weeks or several months after your first crop. And we're pretty lucky here in Kentucky. Um, we have a long growing season. Whoop. Don't fall. Sorry guys, hold on. World's tiniest tripod here. Oh lord. Sorry y'all. Um, but yeah, successive planting. You just don't want to harvest all of your crop all at once and then not have anything left for the end of the season. And uh, here in Kentucky, we're really fortunate in having a long growing season. As a matter of fact, here in the beginning of June, we still have an entire month of seed starting time before we're starting to run the risk of things not getting to maturity. So of course, we still have our seed table inside. We're still starting new plants on a weekly basis. Anything we don't use, we're giving away, but our goal is to grow as many survival garden seeds as possible. If you guys haven't been to survival garden seeds yet, it's not too late to get your discounted seeds. That code is good all year long. Go to survivalgardenseeds.com and use code Nina Rind Woodwater Outdoors. You're getting better seeds for a better price. Every packet comes with seed saving instructions so you can perpetuate your own organic collection and everything that I grew came up. You're looking at it all here today. The discount code applies to all three kits. You can get the 30 pack home garden collection, the 50 pack homesteader collection, the 100 pack farmer collection, or you can be brave like me and try all three. Now the code can be used over and over again, so if you try one pack and you decide that you do want to try another, you can order all the seeds you want and get the discount every single time. The only plants that we lost, we lost during transplant. Everything that I planted actually germinated and grew, but it is possible that with the shock of the uh, temperature, with the soil conditions, and water conditions that some of them just weren't able to hack it once they were out of their baby cups. But either way, I'm over the moon. I've never bought seeds and had this much success with the entire collection. So there's a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to try this year because there's just not room for it. And maybe it wasn't a companion plant to the stuff that I did have higher priorities for, but we have a lot of seeds left over. They're good in cold storage for three to eight years. So every time you grow one, you save your seeds, you're getting another three to eight years of healthy organic food for your family. Heirloom seeds, non-GMO, non-hybridized. Although we might be seeing some hybridization over here because my plants have uh, 
squash and zucchini are so close together, but I'm working with what I have. Um, I'm officially dubbing this micro farming. I don't know if anybody's used that term yet, but uh, for as much as I have growing in such a tiny space, I think it's appropriate. So all this can be yours for a discount. SurvivalGardenSeeds.com, discount code MeanerRind, Woodwater Outdoors. Well, that's it for this afternoon, y'all. We've got to get out on the river. It's hot. I want to go swimming. We're probably going to take our trot line out because it's getting to be breeding season for the catfish, and we'll take about a one-month break or so where you guys are going to see a whole lot of garden action. We're going to do some camping, lots of outdoor cooking, and basically just whatever adventures we can come up with. <laughs> if you're growing a garden this year, send me some pictures of it on Instagram at Renegade 2.0. I look forward to seeing them. But uh, I'll come back out tonight and turn the camera on again and we'll go over that natural spray to get rid of your flea beetles and I'll show you guys how I apply it. Alright guys, we're going to go over method number one real quick. I didn't actually have time to run out and buy organic soap. Um, I know I probably should have made the time. But I did Google it, thank God for Google, and uh, Dawn dish detergent works just as well if you use it in smaller increments. So I have a half gallon of distilled water here. I put in one teaspoon of Dawn dish liquid, that's where we're getting our suds from, and about a half cup of 70% isopropyl alcohol. So this is what we're after right now. Die. Die. Die, 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 die. No, seriously, you wanna actually spray this on. You don't wanna be violent toward your plants. Flea beetles. Uh, much like the common flea, have extremely strong back legs. As a matter of fact, look, as I'm spraying this on, you can kind of see them clearing out. You'll see them jump. There's one. He just jumped. They have really, really strong back legs, and they can jump just like a flea does, so that's where they get their name. And we're just going to douse the tops of all of this section. And once we get that good and doused, we're going to go ahead go after the underside of the plant because they will hide there. Oh. We don't want to hurt the lightning bug. No. He's a friendly. Okay, we're going to set you down over here. <laughs> Let's just put you there. There you go, little friend. The second most popular method for removal and control of flea beetles is to lay down sticky traps around the edge of your garden. This would probably work for us if we had them in the house, but since we're outside, we have a lot of pollen this time of year. We just wanted to be more proactive and kind of hit the bugs where we could actually see them. Wow, they're just jumping all over right here. If you guys have any comments or suggestions, feel free to reach out to me in the comments, or you can get a hold of me on Instagram at Renegade 2.0. I've got a couple of friends who have been sending me pictures of their gardens. I'll put those up now. A uh, good buddy of mine across the pond in the UK has come up with a rather ingenious method for a strawberry wall. Uh, this is something I've never seen before, but honestly I'm kind of jealous. Now that I've seen how he's doing this, I'm definitely going to build one next year. I can't wait to have an entire wall of edible fruit. That's going to be really, really cool. So, Mr. Carey, well done, sir. My friend Trenton. I'll just show you guys a trick if you're raising tomatoes to get more output. These little... Yellow flowers are, of course, what are going to become the tomatoes. You take your fingers like this, you vibrate them when the blooms are open for about 20 seconds. It kind of shakes those hormones together, kind of like when a bee pollinates a flower. But if you do that, you're going to get more tomatoes on your vine. Well done, sir. Keep them coming. I appreciate you guys joining me. Send me some pictures of your garden on Instagram at Renegade 2.0.